Dear General Overseers of Churches in Nigeria, I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord, and I speak the following, the following words with utmost respect, great respect for you. My name is Olushe Bumokolu. It has been in the news recently that some of you, you have started lamenting about the spate of violence in Nigeria. You are concerned and you are speaking out. You are condemning government, you are asking questions. But please, the surprising thing is that we are actually surprised that you are also surprised. We are surprised that you are lamenting. We are actually surprised that you are speaking out because we are asking ourselves, what exactly do you expect? The kind of messages you have been preaching in this country in the last 40 years, what kind of Christians do you expect that that kind of message would produce? What kind of society do you expect is going to produce? How do you expect Nigeria to be a righteous nation with the kind of messages most of you, with all due respect, have been preaching in the last 45, 40 to 50 years in Nigeria? The, the, the crux of your message is materialistic. Everything is about how people are going to eat, how people are going to have money, how people are going to spend money. That's all. You did not raise righteous people for this society. You did not raise godly people for Nigeria. You did not disciple people. You did not preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why are you then surprised? You never mobilized your followers to witness and preach to the people who have become bandits today. Rather, you keep mobilizing them to give and to build buildings for you that really does nothing and which you spend so much money to maintain. So we are wondering, sirs, why are you surprised with the level of evil in Nigeria? If there's any group of people that has failed Nigeria, it is the church. And within that church, the, the, the greatest culprit is the general overseers, the pastors, the preachers, who have refused to raise righteous people, but rather are after their own pocket. They are after what they will get. They are after the names. When you are preaching to people that if they are firstborn, they need to give some special offering. How will Nigeria develop if that's the kind of message you are preaching? You said, oh, they are going to eat and they are going to be filled. If, our pop if the Christian population increases and we all have to eat, how are we going to eat if there is no mechanized farming? Is the food going to drop from heaven? Who will be the people that are going to practice that mechanized farming? You just keep putting people's faith in things that are not real. You keep... We want them to keep expecting some divine miracles that we just keep throwing monies at them. You gave the impression that hard work is not needed. All they needed is to give offering and that they will be rich. Now you are asking, why is it that it is difficult to travel from one part of the country to the other? That is the reason, sir. Because you have not been preaching the truth. You know the decadence around you. If, if the church is this corrupt, if around you we have so much corruption, what do you expect in the larger society? The Bible says, Jesus said we are the light of the world and that we are the salt of the earth. Two kind of relationship we must have, light and salt. You neither raise light nor salt. Where are the salt in the society? Where is the testimony? When a general overseer will be preaching against women wearing trousers and wearing suits, and has been preaching that for decades. And then you are expecting the society to develop. You are expecting the society to simply grow for things to work well. How? The real issue of unrighteousness, you have left it untouched. We are now focusing on clothing. And you are expecting the society to turn out right. Once you land on any place, we see your pictures coming from private jets. We see you traveling with convoys of cars. That's the picture you are painting to young people in our society. They want to be where you are. They want to have those things that you have. Unfortunately, the economy does not support that. 
So many have resulted into stealing, into kidnapping. Many people attend your programs. They fornicate. They are into adultery. They are into ungodliness. You never do altar call for those ones. You tell them those who want to rise this year. You hold programs every December. You keep using sweet words. You tell them it is your year of uplifting. It is your year of this. You have been saying this thing for 40 years. People are suffering. Things are getting worse in the society. In, in countries where they don't even believe in God, they are advancing far more than we do. You hold all kind of night vigils. You don't even care about safety of people. They have to travel miles upon miles to, to attend your programs. You keep promising them that you can solve all of their problems. Now you are telling them they should go into politics. Did you raise them to go into politics? Did you raise anybody to stand as Daniel in our offices? What is the difference between a Christian and a non-believer in our offices? I'm wondering, what, sir, why you, you are, why you are surprised that there is evil in this country. You are now beginning to realize that all the promises you are making, they are not visible. Because the economy doesn't even support your promise. I know you say, oh, no, no, we are depending on heaven's economy. But you yourself know within your heart that people will begin to, will continue to suffer if the economy is not good. No matter how much you pray and prophesy, if we cannot fix our hospitals and put adequate equipment that can help people to simply go and diagnose what is wrong with them, people will continue to suffer and die. But instead of doing that, you, you prefer to build buildings worth billions just to gather people on Sunday. Those same people will die at home because they have no diagnostic centers. No MRI scan. Whatever. No x-ray. You Simple ailment. People are dying. God gave this knowledge. We have become so selfish, so self-centered. You oppress people, sirs, even with your wealth. The wealth that came from the offering of people. Let me tell you something, sir. In Acts, the Bible says they laid all that they had at the apostles' feet. Those apostles, they didn't lay claim to that money as their own. They took it and distributed it. And the Bible said there was not a lack among them. But sir, what you do is that you take all the money and then you begin to boast to us that you are the richest pastor in the world. You begin to boast to us that you have so much wealth. You prefer to oppress us with your wealth than to express the love of Jesus in sharing it for everybody. Your chairs, sir, they are separate. They, they have big coaching chairs for you. Every other person can sit on plastic chairs. Those are the kind of example you are setting. If politicians are doing it, they are not. you should not blame them, sir. Because that's the example we see in you, sir. Where is the Christ that you have been preaching? Your gospel likely have become ineffective. Now you are begging people to respect you. Did, any, did Mandela beg anybody to respect him? Because of the great sacrifice this, this man made, they respect him so much, even in death. If an unbeliever is so respected, how much more should a servant of God? But now what you are doing is threatening us. That if we correct you, that uh, God is going to just spank us. We must not correct you. We must not say anything against you. You have raised so many young people now that have become psychophants. They are calling you people, father, 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 father. It has become a, 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 a clique. It has become a cult. They believe that they cannot succeed in ministry unless they bow to you. Some of them even believe you carry some special anointing that they must tap into it before you go. Sir, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7, it says God has given unto every one of us grace according to the measure of faith. We all have what we need to fulfill our ministry. Whether apostle, teacher, prophet, Jesus will give every man what he needs, sir. Not what you carry. What you carry is for the body of Christ. What you carry, it is to raise the children of God to become like Christ. What everybody needs to do ministry, Jesus will deposit it in them, sir. But you have confused people. So they literally worship you. Many of you, sir, you have surrounded yourself with psychophants who cannot tell you the truth. Some of you have universities, you have uh, institutions. What they do there is terrible. It's worse than what is happening in some federal institutions. Some of your, some of your schools are dying. But now you are blaming the government. Are we not supposed to be the light, sir? 
and the salt of the earth. Where are the people that you have raised? You gather people from year to year. All you are just telling them is material success. How then do you not expect that we are going to end up like this? Everybody is desperately looking for money. Everybody. When politician comes to you, you even you bless them. When 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 people come to you, when people attend your program and they are wealthy, you tell them that that wealth is a, is still small. There is still a place God is taking them to. What do they want to do? A man has four cars. You said it's too small. So how many cars do you want him to ride? Why are you teaching us covetousness? Why can't you speak the truth? You have truly disappointed our Lord Jesus Christ. This is not the gospel that he commissioned and committed into your hand to preach. Many of you have turned this ministry to family affairs. Some of your children, they have audacity to be abusing pastors. Some of your children, they have audacity to abuse pastors. And you see this and you are watching it and you think the society will grow. Some of your children, they oppress people. They talk to, they talk to believers. The people Jesus died for on the cross, as if they are beggars, as if they are a nobody. You sit down there. You are watching it like a line. Your children are desecrating the altar. Many of you are planning how you will quietly hand over to them. It has become a family business because it's all about money. It's all about wealth. And then you are wondering, you are asking, why is Nigeria bad, sir? Why will it not be bad? If for you, ministry is about money, what do you think it should be for the kidnappers, for the hoodlums, for the armed robbers? It's about money. The, the lady that is prostituting her body is about money. You are living for money. Many of you are stealing from people. You are preaching. They are dropping money. And sir, you think that is the call of God? You think that is the same gospel that Apostle Paul preached? You think that is the same gospel that Peter preached? That he told somebody, he said, may you perish with your money, for you think you can buy the gift of God with money. But sir, you are telling us that everything, we just need to sow seed. We just need to give. So, so bad, you are saying if we don't pay tight, we won't go to heaven. Nullifying the works of Jesus. If that was it, to make heaven, why would Jesus die? God should just send a message to everybody on that. Pay 10% and you will all make heaven. But that's what you are preaching. But if we correct you now, they will say we are rebellious. They will say that we are disrespectful. So now we must honor you above the word of God. God forbid. Respectfully, sir, we will not do that. We will honor the word of God above you. Let God be the one to judge ultimately. If it is that we have been rude or that we have spoken rightly against you. Let God be the judge. Don't be, a, see, don't, don't be fearful for what will happen to us. Sir, face what will happen to you. Because many of you are going to face the wrath of God. God has given you great opportunity. He opened door unto you. He opened the heart of people to you. He gave you millions of people. Why? So that you can raise them to become like Jesus. What do you do? You turn them to factory that produces money for you. You turn them to printing machines that print money for you. That's what you really care about. So please, sir, don't be, don't be surprised with what is happening. It is what you have shown, sir. Over the years, the kind of message that you are preaching that does not affect anything. They come, they hear you, they go to their place of work, they are as corrupt as anybody. How can the society be changed? How? God is not partial. In countries where they don't know God and they are hardworking and they strive for their society, for their economy, they are developing. You see, God is not partial. The, the scripture you quote, you quote it wrong, you say, see time and harvest will always be. But what that means is that, see, people will always reap what they sow. If you work hard for your country, if you strive to make your country great, it will be great. Somebody came and transformed Singapore. When will you raise a Christian that God can make president of this country? Because the kind of persons you are raising, if God makes them president, there's no difference. The kind of persons you are raising, if they become governor, they will steal money. If they become senator, they will steal money. They will be corrupt. When will you raise a Daniel for us? When will it all be about Jesus, that it will not be about you? Now it's about you. That's why you are surrounded yourself with psychophants. People only tell you what you want to hear. You have become a demigod. If people want to see you, <laughs> it's almost as if they want to see God. Some of you, your wife, if elderly men want to even talk to your wife, they have to kneel down. Who are you? Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are, sirs? It's all about Jesus. It's all about you. And I can't say you, sirs. 
that you please repent. You know, I had some one of you, sir, saying that if a man has a father, the father may not be intelligent, may not be brilliant, may not even be good, but the son will not disrespect that father. Yes, that is the truth. The son will not disrespect that father. But if the father says to the son, son, you must not serve Jesus. Jesus is not the way. That son has a right to say, father, I'm going to serve Jesus. That is not disrespect, sir. Because there's a, there's a way you, you tell all these stories and you confuse people. Uh, there's a way you say it's us and you confuse people. That is not disrespect, sir. In fact, Peter said, judge for yourself. Shall we obey God rather than man? If we have come and we have spoken like this, we have not disrespected you, sir. We are, if you were doing the right thing, we will be glad. We have been praying in our closet for you, for God to show mercy on you, for you to see the truth. But many of you are close to the grave and you have not yet seen it. All you are still preaching is still these error messages. Not the Bible. Many of you, sir, you know that the Bible is no longer a book that is alive to you. You just come and preach what you want to preach and support it with Bible verses here and there. You cannot really open Bible and speak the word of God and speak that scripture out to people anymore. You know that even your private closest, sir, that no longer happens. That's a danger. You are covering many things up. You are acting based on, on what God had used you to do in the past. And the reputation you have with the people, they just believe you're a man of God. But you know, sir, that you have truly lost touch with God. It's a desire that before you go, you will repent. Yes, sir. Before you go, sir, we are praying that you will repent. That even if it is for, for one day, you will even preach the genuine gospel. The gospel that Paul preached, sir. When you read, when you read the epistle, sir, you will see what Paul preached. It's not what you are preaching. The TV, when we turn to our TV station, there is nothing to bless anybody. There is nothing to move anybody. They are, they are, they are just watered down all kinds of things, sir. So, sir, please repent and preach the genuine gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We also, young people, we are crying to God that he will show us mercy, that this nation, we are going to stand for Jesus for this nation, and that this nation will rise again. God will find instrument that will preach his word. Your own generation is going. The generation after you, sir, I want to assure you, they will preach the word of God. They will not be interested in private jets. They will not be interested in big buildings. They will not be interested in buildings, in class. They are going to remain simple and they are going to be devoted only to Jesus. Sir. They are going to be born servant of Christ. I'm sure you will understand sir, that, sir. Born servant of Jesus that we preach. God will show mercy on Nigeria. God will visit us. He will send us mercy. He will raise us a leader. And we also, we will stand at the gates. Jesus said the gate of hell will not prevail. The gate of hell will not prevail. The church will, re will revive. Whether in your lifetime or after you may have gone, Jesus will revive his church. What you will read in Acts chapter 2, we will see it again in our day. I have shared this respectfully. My name once again is Olushe Gumukolu. God bless Nigeria and God bless the body of Christ. Thank you, sirs.